going to be familiar to you once you see what it looks like and it'll just be a little bit of practice for you to get used to it but I think you're going to really enjoy it. So the first thing you need to do is import the package and you need to make sure you put it above the class definition just like you did for the Java scanner and this is the line of code you need to put on it and all this information is in 4. Point, sorry 5 4.2, 4-2 for in your lesson. So it's import javx.swing.joption pane. So what does the joption pane do? Why would you use it? It makes it really nice and easy to display messages to users, to receive input from the users, and to constrict the users to just answering um, quick dialog boxes like yes, no, cancel. So the first one we're going to look at is the prompt for user input and that's so they can sort of put anything they want in there. So the only difference between this one and the others we're going to see is the word input in the middle. So they all have the same format, J option pane. You have to make sure that the J is capitalized, the O is capitalized, the P is capitalized. Then it's dot show and then for this one for user input, you're going to put input and then dialogue. And again, be careful with capitalization. You take one parameter and it's a string message and then you're going to return the user input that they enter. So it's pretty quick and easy. So this one I pulled in from my last sample problem about whether or not you'd like to have a treat and we were using the Java scanner for my example to solve this problem. So now we're going to try and use the J option pane instead. This is the code that was used for the Java scanner and so we had to initialize the scanner so that it would start working and we had to do a print line statement and I actually ended up doing two for this one, sorry about that, um, but you really only needed one and then the way we got the information was we would make a new variable and this variable was called treat type and it was an integer and then we said okay from the reader take the next integer so after you display this message I'm assuming that the reader or that the user is going to input something and then the reader is going to parse out the information, grab that next integer that gets typed in and populate this new variable. So then treat type would be equal to whatever I typed. It's a little bit different here for the J option pane. So it's going to be a string. We talked about string message and the input for the string is equal to and so we have J option pane dot show input dialog. And then this is where we put the text that we want to display on the screen. What kind of treat would you like? Press 1 for candy, 2 for gum, or 0 for none. And then I set an integer again, and it's called treat type, same as up there. And this time it's equal to integer dot parse int, and then input string is in the middle. So you can see this is from here. It's the name of that variable when we set the string input. Um, and so the only thing you need to get used to is typing. It's a little bit long here, but it's not that much longer than the system out dot print line and wait to see how much nicer it looks on the screen. So I'm going to press the next page here and this is what it looks like for the prompt when you use the Java scanner. So it just prints it in the output box. You know, it doesn't look very fancy, doesn't, it's usable, but it's not anything beautiful. But then look at the Japshin pane. This looks really nice. I think it looks a lot more slick and user friendly and I think most people are used to seeing something like this. And then they can um, press their answers and hit OK and it also gives them a cancel box to get out. The next option is just to show a message. So sometimes you just want something to display on the screen. And again it's the Japshin pane dot show and then the message word is different and then the dialog. And this is just going to display to the user. There's two parameters that come in. So the first you just pass null and it needs to be sent in parentheses. And then you have your message that you're going to be sending. So I was looking at, again, the same program that I had, had um, demonstrated before about asking if you wanted a treat. And so one of the requirements was that I was trying to say, like, if I enter a zero, that I don't want a treat. And I decided to print a line that said your dentist will be happy with your choice and then it gave a return. So let's look at how the code looked in the Java scanner. So when we use the Java scanner, 
this one isn't the scanner right here, but the scanner had pulled the information, and so it populated that treat type field. So I said, okay, if treat type is equal to zero, and again, when we're checking for conditionals, remember the equal has to have the two equal signs, then we'd print out a system line, or print, print line that said your dentist will be happy with you, and then return, and the program would stop. So this is what it would look like using, um, if we use the Jaption pane, so it said if treat type is equal to zero, string, so I had to create a new variable to hold the message. Um, so I called it, it was a string variable and I called the variable happy dentist message. And that message is equal to your dentist will be happy with you. And so then the J option pane dot show message dialog. And then here's the parentheses and null was the first thing we had to send and then comma. And then happy dentist is just this message that I wanted to send, and then I can do my return value after. Let's see how that looks. So again, this is just how it looks if it just prints the message. Not, not too bad, that's what we've been used to seeing. But now, this looks much nicer, I think. So I have a nice message, your dentist will be happy with your choice, and it gives me an okay just to cancel out. And here's the third one, which is to ask a confirmation question. So, um, and the difference here is the word confirm. Oops. So it's going to display a message to the user with limited choices. So it can be yes and no, it can be yes, no, cancel. And it takes multiple parameters. So the parent, you're going to pass the null again, first thing, just like before. Then you're going to have your message and you have to make sure it's in quotes. Then you can t give a title to the dialogue or you can pass, you know, a string of words or you can just pass null and then your message type. So you're going to say if it's yes and no, or if it's yes, no, cancel. And the exact format is all in your material in lesson 4-2. Okay, so again, I went back to the first one again of what kind of treat you would like. It's a little bit awkward thinking of a yes and no question from my existing code, but I thought this one, you know, if you, do you want a treat is what I decided I would do. So I sort of made a slight change to the code from the original one. So originally it was the same that we looked at already, that there would press one for candy, two for gum, zero for none. So I decided that I was going to ask them, I was going to do a new integer, and it's going to be called treat type, <clears throat> same as up above. And basically I want to find out first, like, do you even want a treat? So um, J option pane, show confirm dialog, and my options are so null, I pass that first. Then I say, would you like a treat? And I'm going to label this box treat question is the name of this, is what I'm calling this question. And then for J option pane, I'm going to give the yes, no, cancel option. So those are all the choices. And notice these are all in capitals. So you have to do it in capitals. And you have to have the underscore there. And then I have to put an if statement in. So if the treat type is equal to J option pane dot cancel option, then it's going to do one thing. So it's, it's I mean, that's how it's sort of as powerful is because you add the if statements in and you set, you say, check this variable if it's equal to either cancel option or yes option or no option. So this is what it looks like. So again, if you know, what treat would you like? That's what it would look like before. And this one asks first, like, would you like a treat? And so I can say yes, or I can say no, or I can, I can hit cancel and get out. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of visual for what it looks like. If you follow your text in, in the lesson, it really tells you everything that you would need, and you just need to go back to your existing code to make the changes. So there's two assignments where you have to adjust your 4-2 code, or your exercise 4.2 code um, from last week. If you have any questions, send me messages.